PFT Live Friday edition, one week away from our hiatus. One day after the game one of the NBA Finals, the Dallas Mavericks tried to come back, but the Boston Celtics held them off. Now, they tell me that each team in the Finals has what we would call a dynamic duo. I don't know that I could name them all. There's, wait, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. There we go. That's yeah. on Dallas. And who are the two? Shereen, who are the two on the Celtics? I I don't know. I don't follow the NBA. I could have named Jason the two Tatum. on Dallas because I live in Dallas. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Okay. That's news to me. So. Okay. Inspired by that. Game, names that we, I did not watch it last night. Names that we know from the NFL. The best all-time dynamic duos. Any position, any side of the ball. Two guys that are identified as kind of like not quite Batman and Robin, more like Batman and Batman. What do you got? Okay, I'm going to go off script because you said on either side of the ball, but I don't know how you leave Tom Brady and Bill Belichick out of this because they were the greatest duo of all time. You can argue which one was greater. You can do that too. Because Brady obviously won the extra Super Bowl in Tampa, but I mean, 17 division titles, nine AFC championship games, six Super Bowls. I, I, you know, they were the greatest of all time to me, the greatest duo of all time. And I don't even think there's a question other than if you question my use of a head coach instead of uh, another player. And it's not really obvious, and I don't question it because of that. The only reason I would have any hesitation is you would assume the two dynamic duos truly get along and didn't have some <laughs> ugly divorce that interrupted that run of greatness and ended yes. it. So, yeah, it's it's like Superman versus Batman, ultimately, between yeah. Brady and Belichick. The first one that came to mind for me, because, you know, it's a team sport, 11 guys on each team are out there at any given moment. To boil it down to two is difficult, but Montana and Rice, yep. I mean, Montana and Rice, say no more. Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, there was always that argument. Who made who? Was it Rice who made Montana? Was it Montana who made Rice? They made each other in the perfect offense. And Montana and Rice, a combination that propelled the 49ers to become really the best team of the 80s and into the early 90s. Although by then it was it was young and Rice. But still, Montana and Rice, that's the one that resonates. Yeah, and that was number two on my list, Mike. Two Super Bowls. Rice had 6,000-yard season. You could also put, as you said, Steve Young and Jerry. I think Jerry Rice is probably the only guy that would be on here twice. But um, I'm going to go I'm gonna go old school, and I'm going to go with Johnny Unitas and Raymond Berry. 12 seasons wow. together. Raymond Berry had 600 catches, 9,200 yards uh, roughly, and and really both are Hall of Fame players, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. But I just don't think you can leave some of the old-timers out, and, and they were the really old-timers, but they were really great together. That's good. That's very impressive. That's, that's farther back than either of us were actively watching the game of True. football. I know that. All right. Uh, next one for me, I'm going to go modern day, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I mean, yeah. they, they are the engine that has really propelled that offense. I know Tyreek Hill had a lot to do with it, and without him, I don't think they win Super Bowl 54. He makes that great catch, the jet chip wasp play, down 10 with seven minutes left in the Super Bowl. But it's Mahomes and Kelsey. They are the most identifiable, tied at the hip. I remember when Mahomes first kind of exploded on the scene, Kelsey knew what he had. And everywhere Mahomes went in the offseason, there was Kelsey. Mahomes goes to the Final Four, Texas Tech. There's Kelsey. He doesn't have any allegiance to Texas Tech. But Mahomes is there. I'm there. Wherever Pat goes, I go. And they have done, look, great things. And they may have one more significant accomplishment up their sleeves, the first team ever to win three straight Super Bowls. Well, you know who I want to pick for my third one, Mike, and that's Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson, who actually only scored 40 career touchdowns together and more, but that's not going to be my pick. So hold on. I think you got to go okay. defense, and, and we have to name defense, and there are two to me that come to mind right away, and that's Jack Ham and Joe Green and Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, and I'm going to go with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed just because I think they're two of the greatest players at their positions of all time. Obviously, first ballot Hall of Famers, both of them, and they were they were truly great, and it's why the Ravens uh, won a couple Super Bowls there with them is, is they were that good on defense. I was thinking along those lines. Didn't the Cowboys have co-defensive MVPs the year they won they did. Super Bowl Rand- Randy 11? White and Harvey why Martin. Did, 
Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you well, do I that? They were have. co-defensive MVPs. Wow. They were. They were well, maybe great. I will. All right. I'm, I was. It was bothering me because I thought it was Richard Dent and Dan Hampton in Super Bowl twenty, and I looked it up. It's like, well, why am I thinking there yeah. were co-defensive MVPs? And just as you were explaining it, and the Cowboys shirts in the background probably influenced me to remember that yes, it was uh, the Cowboys in Super Bowl eleven. All right. I can go a lot of different directions here. I am going to give some love to, and this is a team we talked about earlier in the week. I still think one of the most underrated accomplishments in NFL history was the Buffalo Bills going to four straight Super Bowls yeah. fueled by Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas. And I know Andre Reid was part of it too, but it, it never, even though he's in the Hall of Fame, it never rose to the level of triplets. It was Jim Kelly in charge of the passing game and Thurman Thomas running and catching passes that made that K gun offense go. And they did it so well. They did it for so long. It was sustained. They kept going back to the Super Bowl to have that ultimate disappointment, heart yanked out of your chest and shown to you and you still go back to zero and zero and get back to the Super Bowl three times over after having one of the worst defeats ever with that field goal that went wide right or wide left depending upon which way you're looking at the goal post that is something that they were able to do it and that was all well not all but it had a lot to do with Kelly and, and Thurman Thomas Mike you know one People, one duo we leave out is Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. But you know what's surprising about that? 112 regular season touchdowns between the, the two of them. They only had two in the postseason, which is why they didn't wow. win more than one Super Bowl. Wow. Other names I had were Kurt Warner and Marshall Falk. They were both NFL MVPs yeah. during that greatest show on turf. And if not regular, not Super Bowl, regular season MVPs. I think it was Warner twice and Falk once or Falk twice and Warner once during that run, if I recall correctly. I had Lynn Swan and John Stallworth on there too. They were, I think, I really do. I still to this day think that what the NFL saw Lynn Swan do in Super Bowl 10 against your Cowboys yeah. was part of this impetus to embrace the passing game because yeah. it's a hell of a lot more exciting than watching guys run between the tackles and hope to break a long run and a touchdown. That ball in the air and the great catch on the back end, I really do think that propelled the league forward. We need to take a break. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.